In the heart of Star City, West Virginia, a chilling narrative was quietly unfolding. An event that would shake this peaceful community to its core was on the horizon. At the center of it all was Skylar Nice, a spirited 16-year-old brimming with dreams and potential. Tragically, she was unaware of the impending doom, a cataclysmic fracture in the bonds of friendship that would end in her untimely demise. Sheila Eddy and Rachel Schoff, Skylar's classmates and closest allies, painted a picture of a perfect friendship trio navigating their teenage lives together. But beneath this veneer, a dark secret was brewing. Things aren't always as they seem. On the fateful night of July 6, 2012, Skylar vanished without a trace. Her trusted companions, Sheila and Rachel, lured her away from the safety of her home with the innocent proposition of a midnight adventure. This seemingly innocent rendezvous was a facade for a horrific plot. In a remote area, away from civilization's eyes, Skylar's life was cruelly extinguished by the very friends she had gone out to enjoy the night with. The cold dawn saw Sheila and Rachel return to their lives, harboring a dark secret. As if nothing happened, they returned to school, carrying on with their lives, their friends' blood on their hands. In the weeks leading up to Skylar's disappearance, she posted a series of disturbingly prophetic tweets. There's just something about you I can't f***ing stand. People can be so mean for absolutely no reason. Hope you don't expect me to give a f*** anymore. Hashtag bye. And the final tweet she wrote sent 10.48pm the night she disappeared. You doing s*** like that is why I will never completely trust you. These digital whispers now form a chilling preface to the horrific events that followed. Another eerie clue lay in a game they'd played where Sheila asked Skylar and Rachel how they'd prefer to die. Would you guys rather suffocate or get shot? Get shot. Shot. Drowning or suffocating? Suffocating. It's almost the same thing. I know, but it's not. Once Skylar was reported missing, the police began investigating her last known contacts. When they reviewed Sheila and Rachel's phones, they noticed a disturbing absence. Despite their friend being missing, there was no mention of Skylar in their conversations, which further aroused suspicion. There was no mention of Skylar whatsoever. It was very odd. It's as if she just erased it from her, from, you know, from her mind forever. The police began investigating the whereabouts of the missing teenager, retracing her last steps. In an unexpected twist, CCTV footage showed Sheila's car on the road at approximately 12.39 a.m. on the night Skylar disappeared. This piece of evidence raised more questions than it answered, placing the friends at the scene, but not revealing the chilling events that unfolded in the dark. Simultaneously, the investigators' attention turned to cell phone data. Towers pinged the girls' cell phones in the town of Blacksville, a fact that contradicted their original narrative. The inconsistencies began to pile up, casting a heavy shadow of doubt over Sheila and Rachel. Months passed with no breakthroughs. The silence was finally broken in December, when Rachel suffered a nervous breakdown. Racked with guilt, she confessed to her attorney who contacted the police. Skylar had not run away. She had been murdered, her body left in a shallow grave in the Pennsylvania wilderness. Rachel led the police to Skylar's remains, and the horrifying truth emerged. Sheila and Rachel were arrested for the first-degree murder of Skylar Nice. They pleaded guilty, and the details of their horrifying act sent shockwaves throughout the community and the nation. Their seemingly perfect friendship had hidden a dark and murderous secret. They were sentenced to long prison terms, forever marked by the cruel act they had perpetrated. The murder of Skylar Nice stands as a chilling reminder of the depths of human depravity. A life cut short, a community forever changed, and the haunting question of how such a tragedy could occur remains. As we remember Skylar, we are reminded of the preciousness of trust and the potential darkness that can lurk behind the faces of those we think we know. I have an issue with a 16-year-old daughter of mine. I can't control her anymore. She's screaming. She's running through the neighborhood. Give me the phone. No, this is over. This is over. Hurry up. Oh, God. Hurry up, please.